stretching out those uh, legs and getting some of the anxious feelings out. Here we go. We have our starter once again, Al Drandridge, as he has been for many years. He'll be our starter, Max Mayo, our national meet coordinator, right there getting our boys lined up. Take equipment to thank all our folks here in San Diego. Done just a magnificent job. It is a beautiful course, beautiful day. Boy, it is going to be a great race. The 2017 Foot Locker National Championships. You know, Stephen, this will be interesting to see which boy wants to take it, whether they're all going to be looking at each other or is somebody going to take it out? Carrie, what do you think? Somebody going to take that out? You know, I think that I, we, what we've seen over the last couple of years, especially on the men's side, the boys' side, is that they, they do look around for a little bit, but then you'll see someone get to about four, 600 meters and say, okay, enough is enough. I wanna get into the mode, the race mode. Sometimes it doesn't feel good to be slower than your race pace. You know, championship style racing is not a fun way to race sometimes. So I think that we're gonna see someone, cause Sean Harrison was, was not uh, afraid to say that if he has to lead this race, he will. He's done it all season. He likes to push hard. They call. They say that he likes Prefontaine, who we all know that Pre used to run very aggressive. So, you know, if he can kind of get his way out of this pack right now, he's kind of back in the pack right now. I think we might see him start to push the pace. You know, Kara, you ran at an elite level from virtually your eighth grade year on. So most of these guys, they're not used to running with people in front of them, around them. They're used to being way out front. So uh, that's a little little bit of a change for some. I wonder if they'll be able to handle that to be able to stay relaxed. It's very hard. And, uh, you know, a lot of parents and coaches are out here that have, they've only seen their kid out in front. And it is very hard mentally to know how to calm yourself down, how to not get too anxious and say, oh my gosh, I'm not having the best day because I'm not winning this race. This is the best in the country right here. So you have to know how to calm yourself down, stay within yourself and let the race unfold, especially in the very first mile. Boy, they are letting a race unfold. This is gonna be turned into a strategic race here. It has not been a fast first six, 700 meters here. So at some point, if we're waiting for the hill, okay, but at some point somebody's gonna make a move here, but everybody in it, everybody measuring everybody else, and we'll come up to the half mile here split in just about 30 seconds. You know, it's interesting to hear how, oh, they're all laughing there, they took a little bit of a turn. Um, you know, it's interesting to see the stats of how many times you've seen a regional winner win. Well, last year, we saw someone that wasn't a regional winner win. Reed Brown came in and he ran a very smart race. He waited until the downhill really pushed hard and finished strong in the last final meters there. But Reed Brown ran the race leading up to this race, the NXN, and we have a couple people that are coming back from that as well. But we also have a couple regional winners that did not race last weekend. So could it be a race between the rested or the, you know, the guys that have been racing all year? I think that's an important factor. Well, 224 for the first 800. So not a blazing first 800, but okay, first 800. You see Kashan, so you just mentioned a little bit before, likes to get up front in the regional at the mile and a half mark. He is a hill runner. He's coming down from altitude. Uh, that's a, a huge advantage, and he's coming down from altitude here to the sea level. Let's see if he pushes that as we go up the hill. But everybody in it as we come back by, we're coming by the mile mark. We see all those Joaquin the Machine. So Joaquin Martinez de Pinoes from Cathedral Catholic. Uh, I think he told us the other day he's raced, run on this course, I don't know, a hundred times. Coaches had him out here on this course, so he knows it well. So if anybody has a home field advantage, not just knowing the course, but the crowd, they're wearing their yellow and red shirts, Cathedral Cap. One of the negatives to that tight group, we just saw one of the runners take a spill there uh. in front of us at the end. When you are in a tight group like that, is that something you have to be aware of? Yes, most definitely. You have to keep your footing. And if you go down, more importantly, to stay calm and not to get too, too excited and use extra energy. Just stay calm. It's early. Get back up, get back in your rhythm, and, and get into the race. Well, for those of you who just want to see a good race, how's this for a good race? Yeah, I, I mean, I... yeah. The leader is 
everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you called it, Tim, so good job. <laughs> well, there you go. Now they all cooperate. You know, Carrie, the one thing, though, you got to stay relaxed here. And I, I wonder about some of those boys. You know, it's like Claudia's race in a regular race in a league final or a, a smaller invitation. They led from the gun. But mm -hmm. here, there's people all around you. They, they need to learn to relax and, and try to stay uh, calm until this race really gets going. And I think the hill is our spot. Well, one thing I like about having more of a relaxed pace is letting these guys sort of let the race kind of come under them. And, you know, it's a pace that they all can handle. They've all seen this pace before. They're not all trying to hang on to a pace they've never seen. And that's something that you see at national sometimes, too, is people run, try to run above what they've ever run. And so right now they're all used to this race pace. They've all seen mm -hmm. these kind of times. And this is Kashawn Harrison there in the white and the green of the West. He's the West Regional Champion, New Mexico State Champion in the Exclusive Mile. So they're 455 at the mile. So a fair pace here, and then we'll hit the hill. Once again, it's about 350 meters from the top to the bottom, but it's the first 120 that are the steepest. And Kashan said he loves hills, and he likes to power up those hills. But what we've learned in talking to the boys over the last couple days and that what they've learned in the last couple of years, watching Reed Brown, watching Drew Hunter, uh, watching those boys run the downhill. Mm -hmm. They all think that you got to be able to run that downhill well. So we'll see who has accomplished that skill or learned that skill over the last couple months getting ready. A lot of these boys have come here and run this course many times, even boys from far away in different parts of the country. They know they, they want to get here. We've heard their goals. Several of them have come and run this course before just on their own. One of the things to pay attention to, and we talked about this in the girls' race, is you watch the video of them. When they get on the grass, not so apparent, but watch as they get into some of the dirt, and you can actually see the dust yep. blowing up around them. I can imagine as a runner, that's not what you want, but something they're having to deal with. No, I mean, you don't want to see the dust coming off of the runners in front of you. You'd rather feel it coming from underneath you. But I think they did bring out a tank, it looks like. They maybe watered down the some of that. So they're making it a little bit more uh, race-friendly for these athletes but watch these guys go down this hill. Staying on your feet is crucial, but also just staying within yourself and not going too hard. But it is so hard. That is such a steep downhill. And as you can see, they'll spread out a little bit. They'll group back up again as we go through it. We see Shelgren, our Northeast Regional Champion, pushing that pace a little bit. Daniel Coré in the region. This is where he took off at about a mile and a half into it. So he's right in position there. So we're spreading out a little bit. That downhill has done its purpose. It's given us a little bit of a string here. We'll see if they start looking at each other. Somebody says, okay, mile and a half. It's my time to go. Well, Tim, you have to start thinking that when you're guys that have not run 407, 410 for, for the mile or even a sub, you know, nine minutes, two mile, you have to start breaking it open because we can see how great these guys can kick. So if you aren't such a, kick, a, a person that can kick as well, you got to start pushing the pace a little bit. Dalton Hanks, he's made the move here, started to decide he'll push it here. And now you can see, Stephen, here we go. Now we're starting to spread it. We're coming up right now to the mile and a half. We should have a great last mile and a half here to see who will be our 2070 Foot Locker National Champion. But Dalton Hanks trying to push that pace. Dalton Hanks was not afraid to say he wants to win. He said that in his interview. Those were his words, so not but surprising. Dylan Jacobs, he's moving up there. He's going to push that pace. It's time to make his move. Kilray doesn't want to let him get too far away, and now people are realizing you got to cover the move. So here we go at the mile and a half. Dylan Jacobs, our top returner from last year, was fifth here last year, having a great season. Kilray trying to move up now, moved into second. The South making a great showing as a team here. The South, big victory last year in the team competition. They're running very well as a group right in that six, seven, eight, nine, ten spots. But as the boys head down to the dog park loop, they'll make that turn. And really, this is the last real bit of downhill they'll enjoy until the very steep part after they climb the hill. But this is our chance here. This is the move that we've been waiting to see here. Kilray, though, trying to close that gap now. You hear one of the officials in the background saying, stay on the course, stay on the course. They've got to 
pretty well marked there, but as we saw in the first turn right around this point, there was a little bit of confusion, but they've done it now once here in race mode, and so they should be good to go from this point on. So they won't have to take their shoe off and look at the map, of course. <laughs> I think we're good right. with that today. All right. Now, Very these good. two are quite familiar with each other. They've been racing each other all year, Kil Kilray and Jacobs. Kilray has only been beaten by Jacobs this year. Uh, they're going to give it a go here, the two of them. That's Dylan Jacobs, the leader, and then Daniel Kilroy trying to move up on his shoulder. And Kilroy has made uh, his MO this year is to make a move right in the middle of the race, and everybody thought he has the strength and the speed, the combination. He's been running very well, won the Midwest Regional, and he's starting to make a bit of a move and trying to open that gap. See if Dylan Jacobs can go with him here. They're coming up to the two-mile mark now. This looks like the Battle of Illinois right here. Mm-hmm. But the South, those three boys running well from the South, trying to move up. Boy, the South, five runners there still in the top 10. Kilray Kill and a, Jacobs, yep. Kilray, 412, 1600 meter runner. Jacobs is a 407, 1600 meter runner. Both of them have great wheels, a lot of strength between the two of them. All right, Jacobs says, not quite yet. It's not your race yet. Here <laughs> I go. So now, Dylan Jacobs, this is his second big move. 948 at two miles, 948 at two miles. Dylan Jacobs, Sandberg High School in Illinois. Well, we know he's not the school record holder because that's Lucas Verbicus' high school, <laughs> so he's going to have to run 829 this year to do that. But here we go, trying to repeat as national champion for Carl Sandberg. But E. Morrison looks like Tatter from the south trying to close that gap. So Jacobs Kilroy, and here comes John Tatter. He's broken away a little bit there. And Braden Morris. The big, tall sophomore from Alito, Texas, 14.58. He's trying to close that gap. So we'll see if they can get up there and make this into a four or five man race. Great Morris would be only the second sophomore ever if he can get up here and win this race. He but said he wanted top three, Tim. His goal for track, so we set out 8.45 Ooh. for 3,200. I believe that boy when he says he can run that fast. Well, when you come from the South, you have had so many great runners, especially from Texas. So he's had a lot of people to follow in their footsteps and to, and to think big. Yeah, you know, he watched all those great races, Reed Brown and Sam Worley and all those guys. Yeah. Reed breaking four minutes last year, so he's seen it before. But this race right now, Dylan Jacobs has thrown the hammer down. He has decided he's going to make his second big move. He's made it, and the question is now, can he hold it? Danny Kilray from Lions Township Again, as Kerry said, they're very familiar with each other. They're trying to pull away, but we still have the big hill to go. John Tatter trying to close that gap. Graydon Morris, the freshman, or the sophomore from Alito, trying to move up. Michael Phillips right in there, and Zach Kreft. He's got a shot at this, trying to move up in there also. But here we go, getting ready to cross the road and heading up the hill. Both look very good right now. Boy, but he hasn't been able to open more than about five meters. And we get ready for the hill for the second time. Dylan Jacobs, Daniel Kilroy, Tatter within view, and here comes the sophomore, <laughs> Morris. Morris right on Tatter's shoulder. You gotta believe, Carrie, the winner's gonna come from those four, don't you? I think so. Every year I think we see something change though on the hill and or even up on the tree line there. There's a lot of things that can happen now in this last little bit. You know, you can hope for one or two and maybe even three to drop, but for all four, I think that our leader, one of those four boys is gonna be our national champion. And Dylan Jacobs continues to lead. He's done the steep work. Now he's just got to make that turn. He's got about another 100 meters uphill, and he has opened up that lead. Dylan Jacobs. Oh, my. He made the big <laughs> move at a mile and a half. He's opened it up, and he's got about a half mile to go to a national championship. Dylan Jacobs. That's this is the so, last of the hill. This is so crucial for him to regroup right here. You're so tired. You get up that hill and then you have that little turn and you still have to climb again. But this is where mentally he needs to regroup and think, I am less than half a mile to go. I got this. 
Oh, the adrenaline's got to be starting to flow. It looks like Morris has moved into third. Kilroy makes that turn on Upas coming downhill in second. But it is Jacobs in the lead. Kilroy and Morris. Coming down that hill, they're exhausted. It's getting pretty warm here in San Diego, but he is on his way. Just about 500 meters to go to a national championship for Dylan Jacobs, Carl Sandberg High in Illinois. Kilroy trying to close, and here comes Morris. Morris has closed that gap on Kilray, but it looks like Jacobs has been able to open up a bit more. He's got to be excited when he sees 400 meters to go. And when he comes around the curb here, Wow, he is going to see a nice crowd waiting for him. They have really packed him in along the course finish line here. He looks great. Tatter trying to move up there also now. But there he is, about 350 meters to go. Dylan Jacobs of Carl Sandberg makes that turn. He'll hit the three-mile mark. A little bit of an uphill right when they go by the start line area. And then a down to the finish. He looks back. We've seen guys close in this last 150 meters. Well, being fifth here last year, top returner, you know that, and you're thinking about that. I want to show everybody I'm back, I'm just as good, and I know he laid his head down last night thinking, I deserve to be top returner because I am, and I want to show people this. 14.48, three miles, here he comes, trying to hold on, Dylan Jacobs, trying to win the national championship. The sophomore Morris has moved up, Tatter's coming now, but this race belongs to Dylan Jacobs. Oh my, Morris trying to make a move, trying to close that gap, but Jacob turns around one more time, points at that finish line banner, yes, national champion, Dylan Jacob, Morris, oh my goodness, the sophomore, second, Kilray, third, a great race for Danny Kilray, John Tatter closes great over that last half mile, he's an All-American first team, the South running great again as a group, and Renfrey finishes in fifth. She's been into sixth, Bosley into seventh. A jobbly, oh my goodness, a great race here. Kashan crosses the line. And all our runners finishing now. Once again, those of you folks here at Morley Field, let them hear it from you. Outstanding runners. It has been a great 2017 season. All of these boys, champions here as they come up the finish. They will be Foot Locker All-Americans for the rest of their life. And here they are, the crowning goal of their 2017 season. We can give you the official time. Dylan Jacobs, the winner at 15.19. Graydon Morris, second, 15.23. I guess we have our favorite for next year. <laughs> All right. Daniel Kilray, 15.27. John Tatter, a great last mile for him, 15.27. Jake Renfrey rounds out our All-American first team at 15.38. And Carter Cheeseman from the South, 15.41. Drew Bosley moved up three spots over that last half mile to finish at 15.42 and seventh. Drew Thompson of the Northeast, 15.43 and eight. Clayton Mendez moved up two spots over that last group. He's from the Midwest, 15.45 and ninth. Devin Hart of the Northeast, 15.45. He finishes in the top 10 All-American second team. Chad Johnson finishes in 11th at 15.46. Zach Kraft, 12th, 15.48. And Harrison Scudamore, 15.48 and 13th. 14th place right there, Kashawn Harrison, 15.50, and Carter Coughlin rounds out the top 15 at 15.42. Boy, we'll have to wait till we see our official results, but right now for the team battle, we got the Midwest at 31 and the South at 32. We'll see what that plays out to be. Congratulations to all our boys, and dating back to the women's race or the girls' race, it looks like we've got a sophomore in each top three there, so an underclassman, for each of the guys and the girls. So this race will certainly be competitive as we already look to next year, the 40th. But man, as we celebrate these, uh, these 40 
high school guys that just gave it their all in front of us here. What are your thoughts, Tim? I, I, I just, again, the, the emergence of these, Dylan Jacobs forever will be a Foot Locker national champion. The, 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 the scope of that is unfathomable to a high school runner. I mean, you look at the people that have come before, and you look at the Galen Rupps and the Matt Centrowitz and all the great runners. They're, he's a Foot Locker national champion, and Morris steps on the stage now and says, hey, next year, everybody look at me. He had a great late push. Okay, let's head downstairs to Carrie, who is with our national champion. You are national champion. Dylan Jacobs, our top returner from last year, finishing fifth in 2016, and now you won. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's, it's an honor to be a part of this. Uh, there's so many great runners that have made it, and even some that haven't made it, and I'm just so blessed to be able to uh, win this one. You know, you really made a hard move there with about a mile and a half to go, and then you and Danny went back and forth for a little bit, and then you put it away on the hill. Talk about your mentality going into that last hill. I knew he was coming up, and... Uh, I made a little move right around the 800 mark at the beginning, but the second lap around, and uh, I mean, I knew if I, if I wanted this national championship, I would have to go as hard as I could, and uh, I'm really, really blessed that I was able to uh, push through that, and I mean, Danny's a great runner, and I knew that. I faced him all season. He's, he's beat me more than I beat him, and uh, I really respect him, and uh, I, I just knew I really needed to push it to uh, take him down. Well, it's anybody's day out here today, but it was yours, and you celebrated in style. Did, did, you, mint, did you visualize that finish, that little dance that you had? Uh, I want to I wanna thank Lucas Verzbikis for that one. Uh, he was talking to our, our Midwest guys, but uh, honestly, I want to thank all my coaches who came out, my parents, my family, and uh, honestly, my teammates back home. They've been motivating me all the way through this, and I really just want to thank them. Well, congratulations, our national champion, you guys. Thank you so much. All right, let's, let's bring in our runner-up. Graydon Morris, we could see you for a couple more years here, but our 10th grader today, coming back now, your second year, you wanted top three and you got it. Yes, ma'am. Talk about your race. Uh, I, start, I felt really good the first mile, uh, not really strenuous at all, and then I hit, went up that hill the first time, that's where it started hurting a little bit, but I just kind of told myself stay focused and uh, just block it out and just keep running, I kept moving up, so. How do you stay composed that last little bit when you're thinking top three and you're in fourth? Uh, I kind of just uh, told myself to not think about it. Just keep running your race and just try to get to the guy in front of you. Are we going to see you now hopefully next year and the following year and be one of two, you and Jorge Torres, for maybe four-time Foot Locker Cross Country Championship finalists? I really hope so. Uh, I'm going to keep training uh, up the mileage a little bit and come back each year if I can. Well, way to go, Graydon. Great race. Thank you. And now we have our final of the top three here, Daniel Kilray. Man, you had a great race out there. Talk about it, Danny. Um, yeah, uh, the hills are definitely taking a little bit more of a toll than you than you think, uh, like everyone says. But it was a great race. I knew that there'd be a lot of competition and a lot of people going for the win, especially when there was no clear favorite. And I put my hand in to try and win, and sometimes things just don't go as well as you want. And a great, another great runner won, so there's just so much, ta so much talent here. The Foot Locker experience was a great way to cap off your awesome season. Talk about the experience. Yeah, uh, New Balance treats you so well here, and I feel like I've just already made so many friends, and the trip isn't even over yet. So it'll just be super cool to keep watching how all of us do through college and still the rest of the people in high school. So I'm super grateful to be here, and it's nice to end my season in sunny San Diego. Well, congratulations, Danny. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, you guys, back to you. Oh, some excited boys there and some excited families that they're about to uh, embrace with as well. Tim, you'd think after 39 years of this race that we'd seen it all, but we didn't. We've seen something new there. You know, you see that look on his face when he pointed at that banner, when Dylan comes down and looks at that. That's, that's, the, that's what this race is. That's, I want that is what every kid, 10,000 kids raced in those regionals as they went through. And everyone wanted that spot at the end. And it's still a Jake. Carl Sandberg, that's their second championship now in uh, six years. That's Speci pretty impressive. And specifically there, when we talk about something we haven't seen yet, he was fifth in the regional. There you which go. Which means so what? Well, that's the first time anybody has come from that fifth place and win the Nationals. In fact, we've had one sixth place. So in the 39 years, 37 of those people came out of the region at a higher place than Dylan did. But you know what the kids have learned over the years now? What they've learned is the regionals, I just have to be in the top ten. And you watch those regionals, and what happens is, hey, I'm counting spots, and you'll see them look around. Now, I remember a couple years ago in the West region when A.J. Acosta, one of the great runners in San Diego history, in the region, they started talking to each other. 
each other and started counting. And they went up the last hill talking to each other. Hey, we got this. What are we going to kill ourselves for? Let's get ready for next week. I think they've learned that lesson. So with a couple of sophomores there in the top three, we will have some favorites coming back. And of course, there's Claudia Lane, who is a junior, who will be looking for the three-peat in the 40th annual running of the Foot Locker Cross Country National Championships. And we're, right now, just so you know, we're gathering our top three from the boys and the girls' side down for the presentation of the awards. At this point, you know, they've done the race, but the weekend still isn't over, right? Oh, that exhale you just heard, 80 kids just exhaled right now because that was the big pressure. That was. You could tell, you know, yesterday and the mornings on Thursday and Friday, they were pretty loose and easy. But this morning you could tell it was race time, and everybody knows you can't be this great. You can't reach this level without having that championship, you know, that, that boxer's mentality of I got to knock somebody out in a race. They all had that today. Now it's over, and what I think is so great, it's the season. Season's over. I mean, you know, the season ends now. You know, some of them will take, I don't know, maybe a whole half day off. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But anyway, they'll take some time off. They can relax. The seniors now can relax. And uh, I think Mika said that uh, one of the great experiences last year, you know, they'll be playing soccer on the beach. They're going to be ice skating. They're going to be eating ice cream sundaes. And it really is a, a wonderful time. Because I think the one thing that they have is they don't have anybody else to share with them how hard this is to get there except the other 40 boys and the other 40 girls that were here. Oh, it's just so fun to watch. Let's head back down to Carrie for our awards presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please turn your attention to our two-time and 2017 Foot Locker National Champion, Claudia Lane. And on the men's side, our 2017 national champion for the Foot Locker national champion, Dylan Jacobs. Congratulations, you guys. You know, Claudia looks like she expected. Dylan, I think, is still, oh my gosh, we said anybody could have won it. And, uh, and I'm sure he thought he was one of them. That's certainly true. But boy, it's sinking in now. They joined some pretty elite company. If they were to go back and look at all the names who had hoisted those trophies in the years before them, they'd find some pretty darn good ones. Well, it's amazing. We mentioned this earlier, it, 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 and it, it bears mentioning again. We've produced 10 Olympic medalists in the last 40 years, U.S. Olympians, and the one thing they have in common, not where they went to college, not who they trained with, not where they went to high school, the one thing that they all 10 have in common is they all raced at Foot Locker at some point in their careers. And I think one of the kids made a great point. You know, they all didn't get here. They took their first steps because the pressure is great. And this was what makes this race so special. You know, cross country is a team sport. There's no doubt about it. And they love warming up with their team, and they'll tell you that all the time. But this is the first time they step on a national stage where it is just them, where they're warming up by themselves, their coach isn't here. This is the time, and they've made it great. And as poised as they are, you forget that they're just teenagers. Ah. They're just teenagers, but they were so excited down there in that finishing shoot. Everyone's high-fiving. Every single one of them are high-fiving each other. They're, they're spraying water on each other. <laughs> you know, it's like the NBA Finals down there right now. They're enjoying every minute of it, and it was such an honor to see America's best. Fantastic. Well, uh, 39 years, we might as well do it at least one more year, right? We'll <laughs> yeah. get to 40, and we know we'll go much beyond that. What do you expect for next year? Oh, my gosh. That's what's so exciting about this. So we expect Claudia Lane to go after what would be the greatest race in history. It'll be the first three-time winner ever. We expect Morris to come back. And, and, you know, Jorge Torres is the only boy in 39 years. So 40 years. We've never had any other boy other than Jorge make it four times. So you have history in the making. But what's also exciting right now is who will be the Morris next year? Right. You know, who will be the Wolfgram next year? Who will come out and make their mark? And wherever they go, that's what's so great about the sport. Whatever races they run, they're going to say, oh, that's the girl from the footlogger, the freshman that got seventh. That's the boy that closed. That's that guy that got second. And I think we can say, you know, we lost all those Texas two-milers last year, Sam Worley and Reed Brown. I guess Texas is okay. They're doing okay. <laughs> I guess they're okay. <laughs> Illinois had a pretty good day on the, uh, the so guys' side. So did Minnesota. Side. And Minnesota. Got to get that plug in yeah, there. Yeah, we did. All right. Well, thank you for being with us, Carrie, Tim. We will do it again next year. And thank you to the Foot Locker family. Thank you to New Balance and East Bay and everybody who puts this great event on, to the families, to the friends. Most of all, though, thank you to those 
80 high school athletes who just ran their hearts out today. Thank you for being here for the Foot Locker Cross Country National Championships. We'll see you again next year.